Gradually, with the world moving towards a futuristic setting, every country in the world seems to have some sort of mega project they are embarking on. We have heard of the Saudi Arabia, UAE, USA, and many more countries trying to start inputting futuristic development in their countries. Canada is also taking a front row seat in this futuristic journey. For instance, we have The Orbit, Canadian futuristic city. However, Canada is embarking on other mega developments that will make life and passage easier for their citizens and the citizens of other countries. And this time, they are collaborating with the US government to build the amazing Gordie Howe International Bridge. Welcome back to the channel Build to Innovate. In this video, we will discuss the international project being built by the Canadian government in conjunction with the US government, which would serve as another monument in both countries. In this video, we will get to know the purpose of this bridge, the cost of building it, and how it will affect the citizens of both Canada and the US. We will also get to know how much work is being done to make this bridge a reality. The Windsor-Detroit Gateway, consisting of the Ambassador Bridge and the Detroit-Windsor Tunnel, is an essential part of the economies of Michigan and Ontario, i.e. in Canada and the United States. It is the busiest commercial land border crossing between the two countries. However, this new bridge project between these countries will make it easier to move people, products and services across borders and ensure that there is enough capacity at border crossings to handle expected increases in cross-border trade and travel in the future. The Gordie Howe International Bridge is a cable-stayed international bridge that spans the Detroit River and is currently under construction. By connecting Highway 401 in Ontario with Interstates 75, 94 and 96 in Michigan, the bridge will connect Detroit and Windsor. In contrast to the current setup, where the neighboring Ambassador Bridge connects to city streets on the Ontario side, the Gordie Howe International Bridge will enable uninterrupted freeway traffic flow. Gordie Howe, a legendary Canadian ice hockey player who spent 25 years with the Detroit Red Wings, was honored with the bridge's name as he died two years before the start of construction. The construction of the Gordie Howe International Bridge is a once-in-a-generation endeavor. The project will not only provide the Windsor-Detroit region with employment opportunities and much-needed transport upgrades for foreign travelers, but it also has unique elements that set it apart from other similar projects. The Windsor-Detroit Bridge Authority, a federal crown company in Canada, was founded in 2012 to oversee the bridge's development and operation after much opposition since the idea for the project was brought in 2004. The main man who tried to reject this mega multi-purpose project's development was Manuel Maroon, the owner of the Ambassador Bridge. The development of the Gordie Howe International Bridge would affect his business. However, in April 2013, the US government approved the project. The Canadian government provided 25 million Canadian dollars the month after to start land acquisition on the Detroit side. Over 350 million Canadian dollars were spent on the site's preparation for development on both sides of the river. After the Michigan Court of Appeals rejected Maroon's bid to halt expropriations on the Michigan side of the river in May 2018, construction on the bridge got underway in July 2018 after the Bridging North America Consortium was chosen to build it. And in 2024, the construction is anticipated to be finished. Eric Behrens, the director of bridge architecture at ACOM, created the bridge design. On the banks of the Detroit River, two A-shaped towers will be constructed, together with a path for bicycles and pedestrians, and six lanes for automobile traffic. 2.5 kilometers, 1.6 miles, will be its length. The bridge's main span will be 853 meters, making it the longest cable-stayed bridge in North America. 2,799 feet. 
The Gordie Howe International Bridge will ensure a smooth movement of people and commodities between the two nations, as border traffic is anticipated to increase from 18,500 cars per day in 2016 to 26,500 by 2025. To create cost estimates for right-of-way and utility relocation, design and construction, as well as maintenance and operation on the Canadian side of the bridge, Transport Canada hired the engineering companies Morrison Hirschfield, Davis Langdon, and Delkin. The Gordie Howe International Bridge team celebrated the determination, commitment, and hard work of staff, contractors, laborers, and suppliers who helped contribute to the progress achieved on all four components of the Gordie Howe International Bridge project on July 1, 2021, 1,000 days after the project's start. Using a 36-year design, build, finance, operate, maintain, availability payment concession, the bridge is being built. Payments made by WDBA to Bridging North America, a concessionaire in the private sector, are contingent upon performance and may be withheld by WDBA if the predetermined performance standards are not satisfied. A $2.9 billion budget, including finance, is scheduled to be set aside for the design-build phase of the $4.4 billion contract, with the remaining $1.5 billion going to the operations maintenance rehabilitation phase, also including financing. Hence, the whole project will cost around $4.415 billion. The Gordie Howe International Bridge will forever change the skylines of Windsor and Detroit, and WDBA acknowledges its significance as a new gateway icon for Canada and the United States. And as a result, specific features have been considered for all project-related components. First, the bridge is a contemporary interpretation of the bridge form that was created using cutting-edge design and construction methods. It will be a distinctive structure that is easy to spot. Themes of the site location are expressed by landscaping, which incorporates elements of continuity and variance to create a coherent experience. To promote safety and security, they will expand upon the functional needs. Private and public pedestrian spaces offer the chance to create a finer-grained environment with more color and services. A combination of curtain walls, precast concrete panels, metal and composite materials will be used to construct the bridge. It will produce an open, clear and welcoming facility with crisp lines, pleasant proportions and beautiful simplicity. Throughout the crossing at night, lighting will produce a unified and aesthetically pleasant visual effect. The bridge, roads, crosswalks for pedestrians, buildings and scenery will all be lit. We should note that the new Canadian port of entry of the bridge will be the biggest Canadian port on the US-Canadian border, and it will be constructed on a 130-acre site. It will have facilities for both passenger and commercial vehicle border crossing inspections, as well as outgoing inspection stations, toll collection stations, a repair facility, and parking. One of the biggest border facilities in North America, the US port of entry, will be built on a 167-acre Property, along with outbound inspection facilities, commercial exit control booths, and parking. It will also contain entrance border inspection facilities for both passenger and business vehicles. Connecting ramps to and from the U.S. port of entry, as well as related local road upgrades, will be part of the Michigan interchange with I-75. Nearly two miles of I-75 will need to be modified to make room for the new ramps leading to the port of entry. There will be more than a dozen bridges over roads and for pedestrians, ranging in length from 100 to 1,700 feet. Will the completion of this project bring the much-anticipated relief to the citizens of both countries? Only time will tell. So, be sure to leave your comments below, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you never miss any of our content. Until next time, take care.